Hi everyone, I'm Trish and welcome to my women's online Bible study. Today we are covering Exodus chapters 1 through 3. So let's say a short prayer and dive right in. Heavenly Father, please uh, help me to speak with clarity and give the hearer the ear to hear. Please impart on us wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of all your ways that we may walk upright before you. Help us to share your word and truth with others um, in clarity and with accuracy. Uh, until Jesus returns in Jesus name we pray amen okay so um I am switching to the new King James version um I just couldn't take it anymore I'm so used to reading from that and I know the English standard version is supposed to be like easier but to me it isn't like um there's there isn't much difference in the wording it's kind of just like sentences kind of swapped around a little bit um so uh but you can read on with whatever version um you like to read from but um uh, please grab your bibles and turn with me to exodus one um and i again i'm reading from the new king james version sorry about the switch <laughs> Now these are the names of the children of Israel who came to Egypt. Um, each man in his household came with Jacob, Reuben, Simeon, Levi, and Judah, Issachar, Zebulun, and Benjamin, Dan, Naphtali, Gad, and Asher. All those who were descendants of Jacob were 70 persons, for Joseph was in Egypt already. And Joseph died and all his brothers and all that generation. But the ch children of Israel were fruitful and increased abundantly, multiplied and grew exceedingly mighty, and the land was filled with them. Now there arose a new king of, over Egypt who did not know Joseph. And he said to his people, Look, the people of the children of Israel are more and mightier than we. Come, let us deal shrewdly with them, lest they multiply. And it happened in the event of war that they also join our enemies and fight against us, and so go, and so go up out of the land. Therefore they set task taskmasters over them to afflict them with their burdens. And they built for Pharaoh supply cities, Python and Ramesses. But the more they afflicted them, the more they multiplied and grew. And they were in dread of the children of Israel. So the Egyptians made the children of Israel serve with rigor. And they made their lives bitter and hard, hard bitter with hard bondage, in mortar, in brick, and in all manner of service in the field. All their service in which they made them serve was with rigor. Then the king of Egypt spoke to the Hebrew midwives, of whom the name of one was Shipra, and the name of the other Pua. And he said, why do you do the duty when do you, when you do sorry when you do the duties of a midwife for the Hebrew women and see them on the birth stools if it is a son then you shall kill him but if it is a daughter then she shall live but the midwives feared God and did not do as the king of Egypt commanded them but saved the male children alive so the king of Egypt called the midwives and said to them why have you done this thing and saved the male children alive and the midwife said to Pharaoh, because the Hebrew women are not like the Egyptian women, for they are lively and give birth before the midwives come to them. Uh, therefore, God dwelt with the midwives and the people multiplied and grew very mighty. And so it was because the midwives feared God that he provided thresholds for them. So Pharaoh commanded all his people saying, every son who is born, you shall cast into the river and every daughter you shall save alive. Uh, Exodus, Exodus 2. And a man of the house of Levi, and, uh, and a man of the house of Levi went and took as wife a daughter of Levi. So the woman conceived and bore a son. And when she saw that he was a beautiful child, she hid him for three months. But when she could no longer hide him, she took an ark of bulrushes for him, daubed it with a asphalt and pitch, put the child in it, and laid it in the reeds by the river's bank. And his sister stood afar off to know what would be done to him. Then the daughter of Pharaoh came down to bathe at the river, and her maidens walked along the riverside. And when she saw the ark among the reeds, she sent her maid to get it. And when she opened it, she saw the child, and behold, the baby wept. So she had compassion on him and said, This is one of the Hebrews' children. Then his sister said to Pharaoh's daughter, uh, Shall I go and call a nurse for you from the Hebrew women, that she may nurse the child for you? And Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Go. So the maiden went and called the child's mother. Then Pharaoh, uh, Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Take this child away and nurse him for me, and I will give you your wages. So the woman took the child and nursed him. And the child grew, and she brought him to Pharaoh's daughter, and he became her son. So she called his name Moses, saying, Because I drew him out of the water. 
Now it came to pass in those days when Moses was grown that he went out with went out to his brethren and looked at their burdens. And he saw an Egyptian beating a Hebrew, one of his brethren. So he looked this way and that way. And when he saw no one, he killed the Egyptian and hid him in the sand. And when he went out the second day, behold, two Hebrew men were fighting. And he said to the one who did the wrong, why are you striking your companion? Then he said, who made you a prince and a judge over us? Do you intend to kill me as you killed the Egyptian? So Moses feared and said, surely this thing is known. When Pharaoh heard of this matter, he sought to kill Moses. But Moses fled from the face of Pharaoh and dwelt in the land of Midian, and he sat down by a well. Now the priest of Midian had seven daughters, and they came and drew water, and they filled the, th the, the tr troughs to water their, wa their father's flock. And the shepherds came and drove them away. But Moses stood up and helped them and watered their flock. When they came to Ruel, their father, he said, How is it that you have come uh, so how is it you how is it that you have come so soon today? And they said an Egyptian delivered us from the hand of the shepherds, and he also drew enough water for us and watered the flock. So he said to his daughters, And where is he? Why is it that you have left the man? Call him that he may eat bread. Then Moses went was content to live with the man, and he gave Zipporah his daughter to Moses, and she bore him a son. He called his name Gershom, for he said, I have been a stranger in a foreign land. Now it happened in the process of time that the king of Egypt died. Then the children of Israel groaned because of the bondage, and they cried out. And their cry came up to God because of the bondage. So God heard their groaning, and God remembered his covenant with Abraham, with Isaac, and with Jacob. And God looked upon the children of Israel, and God acknowledged them. Exodus 3. Now Moses was tending the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of, of Midian. And he led the flock to the back of the desert and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. And the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire from the midst of the bush. So he looked and behold, the bush was burning with fire, but the bush was not consumed. Then Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight. Why does the bush not burn? So when the Lord saw that he turned aside to look, God called to him from the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. And he said, here I am. Then he said, do not draw near this place. Take, off your sand take your sandals off your feet, for the place where you stand is holy ground. Moreover, he said, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look upon God. And the Lord said, I have surely seen the oppression of my people who are in Egypt and have heard their cry because of their taskmasters, for I know their sorrows. So I came down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them up from that land to a good and large land, to a land flowing with milk and honey, to the place of the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Amorites and the Perizzites and the Hivites and the Jebusites. Now, therefore, behold, the cry of the children of Israel has come to me. And I have also seen the oppression, oppression with which the Egyptians oppressed them. Come now. Therefore, and I will send you to Pharaoh that you may bring my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and that I should bring the children of Israel out of Egypt? So he said, I will certainly be with you. And this shall be a sign to you that I have sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you shall serve God on this mountain. Then Moses said to God, Indeed, when I come to the children of Israel and say to them, The God of your fathers has sent me to you, and they say to me, What is his name? What shall I say to them? And God said to, uh, to Moses, I am who I am. And he said, Thus, thus you, shall, you shall say to the children of Israel, I am has sent me to you. Moreover, God said to Moses, Thus you shall say to the children of Israel, the Lord God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has sent me to you. This is my name forever, and this is my memorial to all generations. Go and gather the elders of Israel together and say to them, The Lord God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, of Isaac, and of Jacob appeared to me, saying, I have surely visited you and seen what is done to you in Egypt. And I have said, I will bring you up out of the affliction of Egypt to the land of the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Amorites and the Perizzites and the Hivites and the Jebusites to a land flowing with milk and honey. Then they will heed your voice and uh, you shall come. Sorry. Then they will heed your voice and you shall come. You and the elders of Israel to the king of Egypt, and you shall say to him, The Lord God of the Hebrews has met with us, and now please let us go three days' journey into the wilderness, that we may sacrifice to the Lord our God. But I am sure that the king of Egypt will not let you go. 
No, not even by a mighty hand. So I will stretch out my hand and strike Egypt with all my wonders, which I will do in which I will do in its midst. And after that, he will let you go. And I will give this people favor in the sight of the Egyptians. And it shall be when you go that you shall not go empty handed. But every woman shall ask of her neighbor, namely of her who dwells near her house, articles of silver, silver, articles of gold and clothing. And you shall put them on your sons and on your daughters. So you shall plunder the Egyptians. Heavenly Father, bless the reading of your word and let it fill us up until we are able to eat of it again. See, that is not so bad. Um, the New King James Version kind of just flows right through. It's an easy read. And um, I'm just so, I started off reading this Bible. This is uh, the first version I ever read through. And I've continued to read through this Bible. I have read through the English Standard Version uh, a couple of times. I like it's coffee stains. I, I, I really go through and kind of ruin Bibles, um, especially when I was in graduate school. But when, even when I was in graduate school, like all my commentaries were, were in um, the New King James Version. So I'm just used to it. And so I'm sorry, but it's better to do it earlier than later um, that uh, I am doing a version switch just in case you just happen to um, really, really like the English Standard Version. We can just read along together with different versions. It's totally fine. So, um, uh, if you were just here for the read through, thank you for coming to read through scripture with me. I really appreciate it and I hope to see you again. And if you're here for a more um, uh, in-depth study, stick around and we will dive right in. Okay, so so just a brief background on um, Exodus. Exodus is the second book of the Bible. Um, it is the second book of uh, Moses. Moses wrote the first five books of the Bible uh, the, in the Pentateuch, which I mentioned at the beginning of Genesis. And uh, the word Exodus means to exit or departure, which is fitting for what we just read through um, what takes place because they actually exit out of Egypt to go to the promised land. Uh, they don't make it to the promised land during the book of Exodus, but that is still the um, premise of the book that to exit. So, um, so Moses, um, we have the scripture telling us that Moses mo wrote down the words because, of course, Moses was was not alive during the time of Genesis, but um, he wrote down what the Lord told him happened. So, um, and and you can find that in Exodus twenty four and four, seventeen and fourteen, and thirty four and twenty eight. All of those chapters of the book of Exodus explain. It's just different places where you hear and the Lord said to Moses and wrote, Moses wrote down what the what the Lord was saying. Okay, so then we start with Exodus 1 uh, verses 1 through 7 is pretty much just a recap of what happened during those ending stages of uh, Genesis and Genesis and um, uh, the 12 tribes of Israel, the, those 12 sons that um, Jacob aka Israel had. And um, so moving on to verses 8 through 15, we learn that a new king arises and this king doesn't know Joseph. And so he is um, saying that the people of Israel are growing this, you know, by this um, great number. And he fears that if uh, something was to happen and another country would go to war with them um, and the Israelites would... Uh, uh, go against them with the other country um he's just he doesn't have a reason for feeling this way he just feels this way out of the blue and um so he's deciding to enslave the um children of israel and uh to make matter, matters worse down in uh chapters 15 through 22 um, because he's hardened uh, his heart against them and um, started um, putting uh, this heavy heavy burden on them, uh, they actually increase. <laughs> they they grow even mightier in number to the point to where he goes to and approaches these two maids, uh, midwives, um, and I guess that these are just because of course two women can't just spearhead the um uh, and be there at every birth during the um of every um uh israelite woman who's given birth so i'm assuming that these are the two head uh midwives and then they kind of distribute to what to do to the other like the head nurses um at a hospital in today's talk so um he's like uh kill all the male children but the daughters you can keep alive but the midwives fear god and they say <laughs> that the um the egypt i mean the um israelites are not like the uh egyptian women and they just they give the birth before they even get there they don't even need help <laughs> but, i mean that, that's the uh 
the reason that they they gave because they feared God and they didn't want to kill these babies. Um, and so then he he, um, he he gives a decree to um, have the uh, all the Hebrew boys um, to be drowned in the Nile. So he is just like more evil on top of every uh, type of evil. So then we move on to chapter two, uh, verses one through ten. We find out that oh, verse uh, chapter two begins with the word and. So always be mindful of that when you come to a chapter um, and it breaks up right at and. It, you know, and is a continuation word of what just happened. So um, you know, if you're reading through scripture or you're at church kind of just go back up a verse to see what setting the bible is putting it in that way whoever uh, may be using this verse to tell you something out of they probably they they some some people do try to take it out of context and say something that it's not meant to um say so when you see a word like and try to go back a couple of verses but we just covered that um so just be mindful of that so, and a man of the house of Levi uh, and a daughter of, uh, he, uh, they're both from, Moses' parents are both from the tribe of Levi, which is going to become uh, the uh, priestly line later on. So, he, uh, so these are both descendants of Levi and it's, yeah, it's been um, uh, years, so they're not like probably siblings marrying each other, uh, but God has not given them that law yet. Uh, but he just took a dog. It just says that this, uh, it doesn't tell us this, uh, their names right now either. We learn their la names later later on. Uh, and uh, so she she can see she bears a son. So sorry, I'm stumbling a little bit, guys. Um, she can see she's bears a son. She sees that he's beautiful, and she doesn't want to um, to kill her. You know, she doesn't want them to take her son and kill him. And so she hides him, but you can't hide a baby. You know, newborns are kind of quiet. You can kind of keep them hidden a little bit. But at three months, you know, kids are crying out loud. They're having fits. And so she gets scared and she doesn't, she just builds a, a little ark by the, uh, by the river and she sits a minute and she just put its faith to that. She doesn't know it's probably heartbreaking to have to do such a thing, um, to let go of your child that way. Uh, but his sister, Miriam, doesn't say uh, her name yet either, but, um, uh, she she wants to see what happens. So the reed floats on, and it just so happens that Pharaoh's daughter, who put the hit out on all of the kids, is um, about to go and take a bath. And they, her and her midwife see, um, and of course Miriam, let's not forget that she is there watching on. Um, so she sees that um, uh, and opens the, the basket and sees it's a Hebrew baby and she has compassion. She has compassion on the little baby. And um, Miriam suggests, it says that uh, his sister in chapter two, verse seven, then his sister said to Pharaoh's daughter, shall I take him uh, to call a nurse from the Hebrew women? So she knows who his mom is, but it, it also goes on to say, you know, that she sent, so the maiden went. So maybe they went together because they actually come right back to the mother. So it's, it's definitely Pharaoh uh, because of Mary uh, went on. So his mother actually gets some, you know, sees that, okay, this, you know, she's gonna take him. Um, Pharaoh's daughter actually names him. Uh, the mother does not get to name him. Uh, He's called Moses because uh, Pharaoh's daughter drew him out of the water. So she nurses the child, the mother nurses the child, and she returns him to Pharaoh. Then immediately, um, when you're dropping down to verses 11 through 22, uh, Moses is grown at this point. He is 40 years old. Now, if you want the quick breakdown of how, how we know the ages of Moses, um, you want to turn to Acts 7 and 23, that will give us the first um, uh, 40 years that he spends in Egypt um, as an, a son of the uh, Pharaoh's daughter, adopted son. And then Acts 7 through 30 tell us that Moses, at this point, at 7 and 11, he is 40 and he is about to head to the desert um, because he's you know, about to kill someone <laughs> and he flees. So, um, he uh he and he spends 40 years in the desert so when god appears to him at that burning bush moses is 80 years old when he tells him to go back and um 
And then he spends um, his last 40 years in back in the desert because once he gets the, the children of Israel out and um, they, they go back in the desert, they, it's, it's so much stuff that takes place on why they don't go directly to the promised land, but they spend another 40 years in the desert. So Moses dies at 120 and that Acts verses 7 and 36. So 7, Acts 7 and 23, Acts 7 and 30, and Acts 7 and 36. Now Acts is in the New Testament and it's Stephen giving his address. That's a whole nother thing, but that is the, um, the chapter that you can find the breakdown of Moses' age and how we know how old he was. You do find out um, later in like uh, Deuteronomy and um, other books, even in uh, uh, of the book of Exodus. But that's the easiest um, way there. So anyway, Moses is grown um, and he, he's looking at his uh, his brother. He knows he's Hebrew. He um, that, that wasn't denied of him. Um, and uh, he sees an Egyptian beating him. So he looks... See, you know, the way it's clear, he kills them. Then he sees uh, a couple of his brethren arguing with each other. And then they're like, who made you ruler over of us? You're going to kill us like you did the Egyptians. So once he knew that that was known, he was afraid. Pharaoh knew and Pharaoh wanted to kill him. So Moses flees. He goes to Midian. Uh, on the way, he finds uh, uh, Midian's, the priest of Midian. He sees their seven daughters at a well. He helps them. He helps them out, and then he uh, he dwells with them. He's content with li to live with them. Um, the priest gives Moses Zipporah, his daughter, as a wife, and they have one son at this point in time. Um, it's just Gershom right now. And uh, then down in 23, verses 23 to 25, the, uh, the king of Egypt died. And... Um, the children of Israel are groaning because of the bondage. Their cry finally reaches to God after these hundreds of years of um, enslavement. And uh, God remembers his covenant with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And he acknowledges um, He acknowledges their cry. He finally reaches up to God and he acknowledges. Not that God um, didn't know that they were going through that the entire time because he knew, because he predicted it. He told Abraham what was going to happen. <laughs> um, and so, um, moving on to chapter three, so, um, and this is the point where God appears to Moses and he gives him, uh, a new mission. God gives Moses a new mission at this point in time. Moses is 80 years old. Um, and, uh, he's at the mountain of Horeb, which is the mountain of God. And, uh, he sees this flaming bush, at, but it's not consume the fire is not consuming the bush so moses wants to see what's going on god tells him you have to remove your sandals this is holy god holy ground so now he's learning things about god god is revealing certain things about himself to moses that we know today god is holy you don't know, come to him any type of way uh we will definitely see just how holy he is with all the rules and the laws that he sets to um priests to do uh in the house of the lord uh when he's telling them um, what, what what's clean and unclean, just the way, just who God is and his holiness. Um, but he tells him to remove his sand, sandals and then he gives him the mission. He's like, I'm the God of your father, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And uh, I've seen the oppression and I want you to go, the, the, the old Pharaoh is dead. There's a new one there. Uh, and I want you to go and tell the Pharaoh to let my people go. He's not going to do it. Uh, the people, uh, Moses wants to know who God is. Uh, when, when I get there, <laughs> when I get there, who should I say which sent me? And God is like, tell him I am who I am sent me. <laughs> and so um, uh, that's, that's, that's pretty much how the, uh, the chapter ends is that um, God just tells him that he's not going to just let you guys just walk out of there. I'm going to have to do mighty works and, and wonders. And then um, I wish this went into chapter four um, because they continue to talk there. So this just brief introduction of Moses is 80 years old. He has been in the desert for 40 years. He spent 40 years in Egypt. Good thing that he was there in the desert for 40 years because when they come out, then he already knows how to live out there. Um, so it's all God's providence. Things work out for the good. And so uh, we see, we'll see that um, unfold next time. So uh, that is it. So I want to say thank you for coming to read through scripture with me and dive in a little bit deeper. 
Uh, I really appreciate it. Um, and I hope to see you again next time. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face to shine upon you and bring you peace both now and forevermore. Bye.